So in our previous video, we started talking about the math behind neural networks and we completed the forward pass, wherein starting with the inputs, showing the interactions between the inputs and the weights at different stages, we derived a y hat value, which was a predicted probability. This involves some amount of matrix multiplication and other operations like activations, etc. In this video, as promised, we will move to the part two, which is known as the back propagation, which involves tracing backwards from the loss to the weight updation. Because we want to explain these concepts to you in the simplest possible way, our focus would be to update one particular weight. Let's say this weight. How does this weight get updated as a result of what we observe as loss? That's going to be the focus. And once we understand that well, we will have a very good understanding of how the weights and biases get updated. So with that in mind, let's get started. We have generated a prediction, which is 0.95. Now 0.95 as a probability is very close to one, but we still have to see if we can improvise this further. How do we improvise this? So now comes the concept of loss. What is the difference between the actual and predicted value? Now generally for classification, we use something called as a binary cross entropy but we don't want to complicate the expression, so I'm going with the simplest loss function, which is the squared error loss. What is the squared error loss? You do a sum of difference between the actual and predicted values. In our case, we'll just take one value because we took one record. If you have multiple records, you do a sum of those values to calculate the loss. So in our case, this is how we are calculating the loss. And remember the objective here is to be able to find out such weights at all these levels, such weights and biases, which help us minimize the loss. Please note for our example, we've not considered bias. It would have been just another term to add, but we've kind of ignored it. I'm just showing you the weight updates. So we want to find out such weights which help us minimize the loss. And how do we update the weights? So the general expression for weight update is that the new weights will depend on the old weight minus a step size, which is an adjustment for the learning rate, a hyperparameter that we supply and do L by do W, which is the rate of change of loss with respect to the change in weights. We're trying to control the loss by altering the weights. So please note for our example, I'm just showing you one weight update because it'll involve a lot of calculations. If you even understand how one weight gets updated, you'll get an idea about how the neural networks work. The entire focus now on words is going to be on this expression, which is do L by do W. But if we talk about a particular weight, it will be this connection that we are referring to. Do we know the old weight? Yes, we'll have to go back to the point where we started. This is the third weight. This is this third weight, which is 0.5. This is how it got initialized. Now, this is not the final weight. We have to, of course, look at updating it so that the loss can be minimized. Moving on, if we look at this expression, we can say that the loss depends on y hat because the equation of the loss itself has y hat in it. It depends on the difference between the actual and predicted values. Actual value is an actual value. We can't change it. But prediction is something that can be improvised. So we are saying loss depends on y hat. Let's keep going backwards from here and see what does y hat depend on. So y hat, if you realize, depends on z2. Why? Because this g of z2 is y hat. It is nothing but the sigmoid. So this y hat depends on z2. We are going backwards. That's why it is called back propagation. So y hat depends on z2 through this expression. And what does Z2 depend on? Is there a connection between Z2 and these weights? Let's just try to understand that a little better. Remember all the outputs from the previous hidden layer were like this, and they were taken as a weighted sum to get Z2. So Z2 is nothing but this expression. So we are saying Z2 depends on W213. How do we write this? It is W211 times H11. This weight multiplied by this input. This weight multiplied by this input. So on and so forth. For this weight, it'll be W213 multiplied by H13. First neuron here connected with the third neuron of the previous layer. That's how we put the convention. So now if you see, we can actually write an expression which is known as the chain rule. It's something like this. So we want to find out how does the loss get affected by changing the W213. And it can be written in these three parts in the same sequence. Loss depends on Y hat. That's what it is. Y hat depends on Z2 do y hat divided by do z2, and z2 depends on w213. We have other weights also, but we are interested in only checking with respect to 213, so that's what we have put here. This is called a chain rule because if you put these three together, you'll get do l by do w213. At times, they also show that they cancel this y hat and this y hat, this do z2 and this do z2, and they get do l by do w213. 
That's just a way to simply understand it. So now our entire focus is going to be around this expression. Let's just take this piece and we already know the loss. So if we take a derivative of loss with respect to y hat, it's of the form of x raised to the power n. The derivative is something which will be 2y minus y hat multiplied by minus 1. If you take a derivative of x raised to the power n, that's nx raised to the power n minus 1. If you do follow the same logic here, you'll get this expression. But you are taking a derivative with respect to y hat, so this negative y hat would eventually become a negative 1 here. Do we know all the values here? The answer is yes. This y was given to be 1. This y hat we computed as 0.95, so we already know the value of this expression. We'll do that math later. Let's move to the next part. Now, when you take a derivative of sigmoid, it is of this form. It's the sigmoid multiplied by 1 minus the sigmoid. You can check that. You can check some literature or search it yourself. This is how the formula for derivative of sigmoid is. Do we know the value of gz2? Yes, that's the same as y hat actually, and that's 0.95. So if you plug the value here is 0.95 and 1 minus 0.95, you can do that calculation as well. Now comes the last piece. And if we take a derivative of this with respect to w213, all these terms other than this one here will become constant. Derivative of a constant is zero. If you have a variable multiplied by a constant, for now this h13 for us would act like a constant when we are taking a partial derivative with respect to w213. So the derivative here is going to be h13. Okay, just an observation. These should have been dou, these signs like a partial derivative. That would be nicer, but it's okay. We can just leave it like this for the time being. And what is this h13? Do we already know this? Well, yes, we actually computed this when we got the output from the first activation. This is 2.1. So we know all the values. It's just that we have to plug these to those calculations that we saw earlier. Now let's put all the values here. So this is two times one minus 0.95 multiplied by negative one. This is going to be negative 0.1. Again, this is going to be 0.95 times one minus 0.95. This is 0 0.0475. And H13, we just saw this is 2.1. So we'll just put 2.1 here. So we know all these values. Now we can put these values here and we get to know what is dou L by dou W213. Let's just plug these values. This is negative 0.1, first expression. This is 0 0.0475 and this is 2.1. If you simplify this, it comes out to 0 0.00998. You further simplify it, it becomes 0 0.01, rounding up. Now we go back to where we started and plug this to the weight update equation. This was the only unknown piece there. So here is the weight equation. We know this value is negative 0 0.01. We can choose a learning rate, which is a hyperparameter. And we know the old value of weight was 0.5. So let's plug all the values here, 0.5 minus learning rate. Let's say we have taken it as 0.2. You can take it any other value that you want to experiment with and plug this value of negative 0 0.01 here. You can simplify this. This is 0 0.502. Now, this is how one weight gets updated. But if you get the idea, You've seen entire forward propagation in the process to be able to arrive at the value of 0.95, and you've seen some back propagation to update at least this weight. Of course, we'll have to do many more calculations to update all the other weights, but I hope this much explanation makes it more tangible for you to see how a weight gets updated. Similar logic is applied to update the biases as well. It's just that we have not considered the biases. Otherwise, the bias new would be bias old minus eta times dou L by dou biases. And biases, again, could be there for every single neuron, all the hidden neurons and even the output neuron. So this was an attempt to make the neural networks more relatable for you. So I hope after watching this video, you have more clarity on neural networks and you'll be more confident when you talk about neural networks in future. Do let us know by leaving a comment. Thank you.